Hello and welcome to Christ Church Unity. Uh, thanks for watching our webcast today. I invite you to join me this week for my class, True Prosperity. The class will be live streaming on the web starting this Wednesday night at 6.30, and the class goes until 9 p.m. If you'd like to attend the class via the web, click on the link below me right now, and that will take you to the class where you can pay to be with us live this Wednesday night at 6.30. So again, thank you for joining us at Christ Church Unity. May God continue to richly bless your life. Many blessings. We need to hold Sue in prayer. She's healing today, uh, playing as she's healing. She's had a temperature. Stay away. Stay away. Don't hug Sue today. <laughs> oh, thank you for the blessing of that, Kate, so much. And I want to acknowledge, too, Mary Kay and Lonnie, too. They're singing up here. So beautiful. So beautiful. Uh, today is the day of a very important series. In my view, the understanding of this series could make the difference in your whole year, in your whole life. It might be the most important message I've ever given because I understand this topic better than I ever have before and I've studied it for many, many years. The topic is prosperity and the name of this series today is True Prosperity and I, might, I think I might have a glimpse of what prosperity really means. I've come a very long distance with where I started about this topic many years ago from... Uh, uh, one of those people who was saying, just get, 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 and use these principles to get, get, get. And now it's, it's not about that at all, although I have more than I've ever had. Did you hear what I said? That the teaching's not about getting, but I have more than I've ever had. That's what's amazing. The con it's the consciousness of attraction that I'm speaking of. Many of us, when we hear the word prosperity, think it means, uh, I'm going to learn a way to get stuff. And what I wanted you to hear me say is prosperity, true prosperity, is a consciousness of going forward hopefully. It's a way of living and thinking. If you just want to be about getting things, once you get the things, then your consciousness just goes back to normal. Because you didn't work on the consciousness, you just worked on getting something. Does that make sense? So prosperity is actually a way of living and thinking, not just about money and things. And poverty is also a way of living and thinking, not just the absence of money and things. Right? That prosperity is a way of thinking, a way of living, a way of knowing that all that you need is being provided. The most prosperous person I know was Jesus the Christ, and he had nothing with him. No purse, no sword, the scriptures tell us. Just went, and by the way, in a... In a in a, in a robe with no seams. Look at our clothes today, all these seams. Can you imagine in those days, a robe with no seams? Wow, now that was rich. And everything that he needed was provided in the moment. In the moment that it was needed. That is the consciousness that we want to know and put on, is the consciousness of the Christ. And how we do that is understanding and knowing what spiritual substance is. Right? I'm not about using these principles to get stuff. And I used to be, I'll be honest with you, I absolutely used to be, I don't, I don't mind telling you, that was a part of my uh, development and I was just helping people left and right get stuff. And that was cool because people learned, all right, I haven't, I'm co-creating, I learned that I have some responsibility and I can do that. But what I started seeing over the years in my churches, the people I served, once they got stuff, life went back to normal. They still had bills, they still had credit card debt. They would still come to me with the exact same questions. I started saying, what is wrong with this picture? Why is my life, why am I consistently increasing in my prosperity and the people I'm teaching are not? That's a disconnect. So I could stand up here and keep saying the same thing over and over, but I'm trying to be teachable. And so I'm looking at this going, what is happening? So what I realize is that people, people not everyone I'm teaching is understanding the consciousness behind the things. So we need to get to the consciousness of spiritual substance. So I'm using two books in my series. Today's the beginning of that, um, today is the beginning of that topic, and I'm going to uh, tell you what the two books are. Um, and the classes are going to be every Wednesday night in January. And also my class this year is a uh, webinar. It's, uh, li actually, it's live streaming video. I guess not exactly a webinar, but it's live streaming video. And people that want to ask questions, there'll be uh, someone at the computer, they'll say, um, uh, Reverend Alice, um, Ralph in uh, Sun City, Arizona has a question 
And I'll say, okay, and I'll say, okay, Ralph, and I'll talk right to the camera and talk to Ralph. So we want to bring more people in on this series. And the two books I'm using are uh, Spiritual Economics by Eric Butterworth, uh, one of Unity's most famous authors. The other most famous author in Unity, of course, is Charles Fillmore. This is an older book. The books in the bookstore are a little more updated. This book has so many, uh, so many marks in it, it's barely readable anymore. I've studied it so much, and I can't believe how the things I've underlined have changed as my consciousness has shifted. Amen? Amen? Right, so I'm learning. I'm going to tell you the very first sentence in prosperity without reading it. Divine mind is the one and only reality. Now, we're probably going to spend half an hour on that in class, but I'm going to tell you that one statement, divine mind is the one and only reality, is the key to permanent prosperity, to true prosperity, health, wealth, prosperity in all ways, in your money, in your life, in your health. Divine mind is the one and only reality. That's a huge statement. So what we need to be about doing is understanding that God is not up on a throne somewhere passing down presents like Santa Claus when we need something. Many of us grew up in church with God, and it's hard not to, right? We think we've gotten past this idea of God. But the truth is, we all, most of us in this culture see God as what? Tell me. A white, a white man with what? A really long beard? Like, the, yeah, right, the Michelangelo, right? The reaching for man, right? Amazingly, God's made in our image rather than the other way around, right? Right, God's made in our image. So there's a constant view of God as being totally separate from us rather than being in the midst of us. Although Jesus told us over and over, the kingdom of the heavens is where? In the midst of you, is within you. And I'm going to read, um, I'm going to read something from Paul. I've never read it in this way before, but it's important. Um, I can't believe how the scriptures will come alive in a new way when you're actually in the scriptures. I tell you, I got scared the other night. Nobody knew what manna was. I, and I, you know, I'm reading this thing almost every week, right? This, this scripture. So um, this is from Acts 17, and this is when Paul was in Athens. It says, The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live. So that, listen, they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. Us asking where God is is like a fish saying, where is the water? A fish that swims in water all the time doesn't know what water is because it's the only environment they know. I'm saying you as a spiritual being living in a spiritual universe that's governed by spiritual law are constantly surrounded, enfolded, indwelling with God at every moment of every day. And part of true prosperity is being able to contact that invisible essence and bring it into manifestation. That's what God is. That's who God is. It's not some guy up on a sky in a throne. It is the essence of all that is. Remember the burning bush? What does God say? Who do I say sent me? Who knows the answer to that? I am. Not I am a guy in the sky with a long beard. I am that I am, which means I am beingness itself. I am the very livingness of life. Right? I am life itself. Being life. Right? That's... That's a very high idea and a very high concept to understand and bring into awareness into our everyday lives. But what we think of as prosperity and what we think of as getting is a consciousness of attraction that we want to lay hold of. It's always been here. We often think that if we say a few affirmations, we make it true. What I'm saying is you say the affirmations because it's already true. You saying the affirmation doesn't make anything true. It brings you into alignment to what already is true. Does that make sense? Right? So we think we're the ones. No. God, the truth, is absolute reality, is always present at every moment of every day. 
So God is no less present with us in this room right now than God was in Jesus' time. God is present at every moment to the same degree, always. Unchanging. Right? So it's that substance, that spiritual awareness that we want to know and live from. That, that God is the inexhaustible supply. It doesn't matter if the markets go up and down. Spirit is. Right? So the markets going up and down have nothing to do with living a prosperous life. As a matter of fact, us laying hold of this spiritual substance that I'm talking about, bringing that into manifestation, will in fact affect the markets. Right? We live as if everything out here decides this, and it's the opposite. Everything here decides that. Right? We act like we're victims to what happens in the world, and we are creating what happens in the world by our thoughts. Right? By our emotions, what we believe about ourselves. It's just a very high idea to begin to walk into and work with. Your life will change forever if you do. If you commit to working with these ideas, your life will change. Your spending will definitely change. The scriptures say, wherever your treasure is, what? There your heart will be also. Yeah, everything starts to change once you start to shift into a God consciousness. You know, I'm not even talking about tithing. You hear I'm not even saying that word. It's not even about that. Tithing is nothing. Tithing is training wheels. Right? I mean, tithing is wonderful, and yes, I do it. I, I over-tithe. I, I give away so much money now, it's ridiculous. Often, I'm giving, I mean, I've given 20%, 30%, 40%, 50% of my income, and I still have more. How is that possible? How is that possible? Because my consciousness has finally moved into a place of understanding there needs to be a, con a continuous flow of income and outgo. I am in the flow of God's goodness for me, Every time money is going out. I mean, I've done my part to help the economy, believe me. Right? But not foolishly. Intentionally. Intentionally. Intentionally, right? I am in the flow of God's goodness for me. Will you say that with me? I am in the flow of God's goodness for me. Yeah, so we want to move into the awareness that God is the inexhaustible supply. God is. So the market tanking, you know, it's really interesting uh, to watch our church uh, financial life when, uh, when, you know, everything went, <laughs> our church finances had never been better. Why is that? Makes no sense, right? You'd think people would be like, I'm not going to give. People were giving more to church then in a time of crisis because they were saying, I, I need spiritual support. Right. And as soon as everything started getting a little bit better in the market, the church giving went down a little bit. Yeah, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm good, you know. So I watch the financial life, and I, I can tell how people are giving. It's, it's, it can be graphed. It's not hard. We, we do have a graph. Our, our treasurer graphs it, right? Dean says, here's the graph. Here's what, it, here's what it looks like. We know exactly what the trend is. It's not hard to... But we want to tap into God as inexhaustible supply. And believing, the belief in the inexhaustible supply is a requirement, really, to move into it. You know, the story of the woman um, in the scriptures, is, if you look it up, it's like the woman with the issue of blood. Anybody remember that story where she'd been bleeding for 12 years? She was the woman that touched the hem of Jesus' garment. Why would one woman with all these people in a crowd, why would one woman touching the garment get Jesus' attention? Huh? What's that? A special touch. It was the touch of belief. The one who believed in the substance got it. You know, you can say, I don't believe any of this mumbo jumbo. Go right ahead. It's a free country. I've had many people tell me that and in two years come back and say, you know, I... I mean, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to file for bankruptcy. And I say, okay, so let's, let's start back with what's, what are your practices? What have you been doing? This isn't a new problem that I've helped people with. 
uh, in unity. I was in charge of prosperity for the whole movement. I was in charge of the team for the whole movement. I've helped businesses, individuals, couples, families, uh, churches with this issue. The, the main issue is belief that it works and then following through with the practices. Right? Everybody wants a quick fix. Alice, I just want a one phone call, 30 minutes, and by the way, I don't have any money for it, but could you please help me turn my life around financially? And I say, well, tell me about your spiritual life. And they say, what? Yeah, tell me about your spiritual life. And any good financial planner, by the way, will say, you pay God first, then yourself, then everybody else. This is not new information. Right? But to do that... And to do it well, you have to stay in the consciousness of abundance, in the consciousness of prosperity, which the true meaning of the word prosperity is to go forth hopefully, not getting things. If you look up the Latin word, that's what it means. So what we need to understand is the spiritual substance that brings all things is what lies behind everything that you want. Everything. Right? Spiritual substance. The word substance means, well, the Latin word is substare, which means to stand under. Right? Yeah, to stand under. So God stands under all of the things that you need. As a matter of fact, even in science today, what's studied more, you know, we hear all about subatomic particles and all of that. The real study is what they can't see, what's causing the particles to move. Right? Now, we've heard that called now quantum physics. Right? What's causing the particles to move is now what's being researched. It's like, it's, it's not matter, it's dark stuff, we don't know what to call it. And I'm saying, I know what to call it, G-O-D. <laughs> right? It's the stuff that's moving the stuff that you can't see. It's the matter that's not matter at all. Right? It's the thing that can't be seen that is, in fact, part of everything that is made. The substance that cannot be touched, but is in everything. That is in everything. If we could believe, honestly, I am a spiritual being living in a spiritual universe that is governed by spiritual laws, and then follow that belief through life, you cannot believe how much more there will be for you. In every aspect. Not just, and please hear me, money is absolutely a part of it, but not only. It's in relationship that we find joy. It's in love and you know, working with one another. It's having a healthy body to do things that we want to do, right? All of that is prosperity. But all of it, in my view, must be gotten, if that's, I don't even like that word, must be known through the presence of God first. Because if you don't know the presence of God first, you will only be able to get a thing, and then as you try to move forward, you'll be in the exact same place again. So we want to move into a, a place of prosperity by working with our thoughts. You know, uh, so many people look at what they do not have. You, I, I, I wish I would have brought that scripture. I, I'm, not, I'm not remembering the whole scripture. It's where um, the woman's husband's died. She needs to pay her bills in the Bible. And she calls out for Elisha. You know, I don't have anything in my house. And he says, what do you do have? Well, I only have one thing of oil, right? Right, anyway, then all the vessels are gathered and she keeps pouring oil, 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 so all the vessels are full. Right? It's beautiful, beautiful scripture. How many vessels do you have? Are you looking at only what you do not have or what you do have and how that can be used? So often we're looking around and saying, I don't have this, I don't have that. And so all of our conscience and all of our focus is on that rather than thank you, God, for all of these things that I have. Blessing to increase all that we do have. And not just thank you for this, thank you for that. But we want to do it from a spiritual place like, um, like in, in your wallet, right? Like, like when you look at your wallet and it's empty, thank you God for this wallet that is going to be filled with spiritual substance. That's all money is. We've given it a life that it, it, that's not correct. On the money itself, it says what? In God we what? In God we trust. In God we trust. So much. You know, I did something on money not too long ago, right? Remember that? That whole Sunday we did just about money. And then when you have money in that wallet, thank you, God, for spiritual substance. I see it increasing. Not just thank you for this, thank you for that. As you get dressed in the morning, thank you, God, for these clothes. Yes. 
Thank you, God, for clothing me with spiritual substance today. I sparkle with spiritual substance. Some of you glamour gals will love that. Or guys. I sparkle with spiritual substance. Or as Charles Fillmore said, I fairly sizzle with zeal and enthusiasm to do the work that ought to be done by me. By me. I fairly sizzle. I I fairly sizzle, you know? Yeah. So looking at what is all the good that I have right here in my life right now, I'm going to name it and I'm going to own it and I'm going to praise it and bless it and watch it increase because it will. As you're doing the dishes, rather than being mad about doing the dishes, thank you, God, I have a dish to wash. Right? Thank you, God, I have soap to wash this dish and a place to put it away. Right? Thank you, God, for the heating in my home, for the air conditioning, for a family that loves me. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Do you see how that moves you into a whole different vibration of living? That is prosperous thinking and living. This is what's happening right now. And I'm telling you, it's so interesting, the information that comes to me lately, because I just heard this astrologer saying, this is the year to make the change and it must be made. I mean, it's, it's, it's affirming the energy I've been feeling already. Like, this is a very important year. If you want to make a shift in your life, do it. You have this in your life, do it, because you have the, literally the support of the whole planet pushing you in that direction. Make a change. But the only way it can be done is by you making the decision to change. No one can do it for you. Right? I have the power to change my life. Will you say that with me? I have the power to change my life. I have the power. God gave it to me from the beginning. Because in God, I live and move and have my being. I mean, what a great affirmation. Can you imagine every morning if you said, I live and move and have my being in God? Wow. Oh, what if you said it many times a day? I live and move and have my being in God? Definitely will change the vibration of your livingness. Definitely will move you into a more prosperous way of thinking and living and bring more goodness into your life. We know that what we focus on, we bring more to us, right? What you really want is more God. More stuff is not what you want. The scriptures say very, very clearly, Seek ye first the kingdom and all this will be added unto you. All this. God already knows what you need before you even ask. The scriptures tell us that. So why do we ask, I wonder? Why, do we, why are we supposed to ask? Any idea? If God already knows what we need before we ask, and we're to seek ye first the kingdom, why do we ask? Affirmation. The scripture says, yes, you shall decree a thing and it shall be established for you, claiming what is yours by your divine heritage. Absolutely. Remember, divine mind is the one and only reality. No matter what else you're seeing out there, divine mind is the one and only reality. That means God, the very presence. All that is, all that you have ever desired, all the love that you have ever wanted is the one and only reality. All that we are seeing is just people not tapping in with that goodness and everything is moving us into knowing our goodness. Everything that's happening is for our soul to move, grow, and change and to align with God. That's why everything is happening. Right? So we want to move into a prosperous way of thinking and living. Can you imagine what, just if the people in this room made a commitment to really working this idea. And you know, this may be a far out idea to you. What have you got to lose? If, is everything you're doing working so well at the moment? Right? I mean, is anybody open to a new idea? Can I hear an amen? Yeah. Well, we are called new thought, you know, unity. So let's have one, right? <laughs> Might be an idea. I live and move and have my being in God. That's a great affirmation. I live and move and have my being in God. God is the one and only source of my good. I am prosperous. I am abundance. I am blessed. What great affirmations to take with you throughout your day. So my hope for you this week is that you will begin to tap into that. And I hope, I hope many, as many of you as possible will join me on Wednesday evenings because we can go a lot deeper into this material. Um, sometimes I feel like on Sunday morning you get cheated a little bit because we want to go deeper into the material to make it have a real impact in your daily life. And it's hard for me to see. I'm already over time, right? I want to talk to you. I could go for hours, days uh, on this stuff. And there's so much to it. It's like all Sunday really can do is say, okay, go, have fun, great, go for it, go for it. I'm going to be praying for you, go for it. 
But on Wednesday night, we can say, this is the work. This is how you do it. Put you with a partner to say, here's a support person for the next few weeks. And if you can't join us in person, uh, join us online. Uh, if you can, we'd love to have you uh, do that with us uh, this week. Now, let's join together for a moment of prayer. seems like we need to put a prayer on this, all these ideas. <clears throat> Thank you, God, for the opportunity we have to come together and remember the truth, the truth that sets us free. There is only one presence and one power in the universe, God the good. We know, God, that your will for us is good and that you're always moving us forward. So we want to look forward today into our next phase of being by doing the work of our souls, by blessing, giving thanks for all of the things we have, by acknowledging God as source of all good things, Thank you, God, for the gift of Jesus the Christ who showed us the way, the most prosperous person we know, who at every moment had everything that was needed because he was so in contact with God's substance. That's our prayer. I live and move and have my being in God. I live and move and have my being in God. So for this truth today, we are grateful, we are blessed. And together we say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Together. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And so it is. Amen.